Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. I'm just like a speedrunner, only I'm speedrunning the entire video game industry. Whenever I'm done, I'll be the only person in the world with a world record. Let's press up forward through Jan uh, J July of 1982. We were in the United Kingdom playing on the ZX81. Uh, battleships really don't equate for the best video games at this point, unless you have a friend that can turn away while you're placing all your pieces. Let's press forward and see the next game. It's time to go to the Atari home computer. This is the Black Forest. Not to be confused with the Dark Forest by Sirius Software. Let's take a look at the artwork for the Black Forest. Travel back to the days of old, to a time when dragons roam the earth and sorcerers cast their evil spells. You must explore the Black Forest in search of the life-giving waters of Amrita. Can you prevail against the many and terrible demons that will confront you along the way? I don't know if we can or not. Looks like we need 48k for this one. Gotta have a disk drive. It's a light adventure for ages 8 to 12. Just bear that in mind when we boot the game up. <laughs> I Probably. That's a good point, Manly. I, someone should look into that. I'm, I don't know for sure. And that's all we have, just a few other screenshots, but we have the manual for the Black Forest, which is going to be very helpful because this is a game that I can't define. It is uh, unique and trying to different things, and it's it, it's ambitious. We'll just, we'll just say that. There's the front of the manual that we've already seen. <laughs> Travel back to the days of yesteryear to the very dark and mysterious days when out of the deep-seated fears of men grew myths of huge fire-breathing dragons and objects with unusual powers. You who sit comfortably in front of your Atari computer now find yourself clad in stunning blue-plated armor standing before your king. You are to go to the Black Forest, and amidst the forest is what all men have longed for and what the king desires you to bring back to him. He sends for his wizard, who kneels before the king and presents him with a sword. The king hands the sword to you. It is heavy and razor-sharp, but you also feel something something else, a power deep and strong. You look up questionably at your king. He smiles and says, so you feel the power of Fregrak? Fregrak? Fre <laughs> I don't know if I can pronounce that one. It is your most powerful weapon and your answerer should you have any questions. You have questions already and wonder if the sword can read your mind, but these thoughts are interrupted by the wizard now presents the king with a jar and a strange glowing object. The king places this object on your helmet and you see a glow rush past your eyes. Down to the tips of your boots, with shocked and horrified eyes, you stare at your king. He states, do not fear, this is your shield. With a look that bores right through you, he continues, it will protect you as long as you are strong. Your mind races, protects me against what? Are those wild animals in the Black Forest? Surely my armor is enough. Now the king hands you the jar, and your questions remain unspoken as he says, These are the crystals that give power to your shield. Pray that you have only one left when you meet Ravana. Who or what is Ravana, you wonder? But now the wizard is presenting the king with a box-shaped object and a container. This, says the king, is your destroyer, and the container holds its pellets. You silently question the power of such a box. The king continues, you will need to use the destroyer when you meet Ravana. Be wise and save one pellet for this encounter. Now the king hands you a can. This contains Vapon powder, he says. It is highly toxic to the weaker demons. You will also need to save one measure of this should you live to meet Ravana. You can no longer contain your questions. Demons, you say. I am but a single person. How can I fight demons and live? The king replies with confidence. With the magical objects you now hold, you have the power to defeat any demon you encounter. But you must consult your sword. The answer before each encounter. For it has great powers and is very wise. It knows the weaknesses of all demons and can tell you best how to destroy them. He sits down and takes narrative tone. And the Black Forest, blah, blah, blah. So that opening right there is pretty much all we have for the introduction of how this game is played and what the game is. And whenever you finish the game, uh, the, it, it, they call this an adventure, but it's it's uh, it's a bunch of things. It's like a role-playing game, an adventure game, a uh, tabletop Dungeons & Dragons game. It's all kinds of several things put together. You'll be given a rating based on your inventory at the end of the game. These ratings are as follows. You could be Sir Royal Blue Knight of the Round Table, or you're just the Blue Knight. <laughs> it's a very strange rating system. But that's all we have for the manual. That's a good point. Uh, no, it does not necessarily mean that. It means just uh, re required to run it. So they're not talking about storage space. They're talking about memory. So it, it uh, you, you can have a game that requires 48K, but it still plays just like a tw Atari 2600 game. All right. Let's boot up the Black Forest. by Paul Analria Bigham at the beginning of July 1982. I told you I couldn't classify this one. The game just goes right into it. 
shows you your Blue Knight's inventory. Very poorly designed user interface with dark green on uh, slightly less dark green. This is Huawa the Dragon. So the first thing you do in this game is you push number one on the keyboard. And you ask your sword the answer what to do with this dragon. And they, the sword answers you. So it gives you the tip of what to do next. I've never had a video game ask me what to do where I have to ask the sword. Whoever guards the entrance to this black forest, thrust me into his throat or chest and I'll destroy him. That is the most bizarre thing ever. So then what you do is you take your Atari VCS joystick that's hopefully plugged in and I'm moving my joystick around and nothing's happening. I push the red button. Oh, and now it decides to hold up a sword. Can I move forward now? Okay, I can't. <laughs> it, it is not responsive at all. Here's me moving the joystick. And I put my sword out. Come on, push the red button quickly, quickly. The dragon is going to melt us. I'm hitting the red button over and over again. It's still not taking the sword out. Quickly, take the sword out. I'm pushing the red button. It's still not responding. We know what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take the sword and thrust it there. The, finally, uh, the sword comes out. So now we can move. Moving quickly. Oh, no, we put the sword back away. <laughs> this is the most bizarre game I've ever played. It is also the most bizarre with responding. I am trying again to pull my sword out, but it is not working. Oh, same people with it. Yeah, Flight Sim 2. That's right. Uh, this is a very strange, different idea. Oh, yeah, the font is just terrible. It's still not responding. I have the joystick moving away from the dragon to pull. Thank you, finally. And now I move back and I'm trying to pull the sword out and the red button. I'm hitting it over and over again and it's still not responding. This is the kind of game that decides when it wants to play. You don't get to make that call. We don't see a lot of those games here on the channel. Unless it's something like Dungeon Quest. Where the response of you, you, you making decisions in the game doesn't necessarily equate for that. But this is the worst of all the games we played of it responding. I am still trying to push the red button to get the sword to come out. Any day now. Thank you. Now I got the sword out. Now run at the dragon. I'm moving my joystick to the left and it's not responding. It is still not respond. No. And, <laughs> and it now walked toward the dragon, but it didn't do it with the sword out. So now <laughs> it's... It is the most frustrating control scheme I've ever seen. Yes, ready? <laughs> That's right. This is the kind of game you would... Uh, I, I can't imagine if you bought this in the store and came home because th there's been so many games on the Atari home computer that responded and played well. Okay, sword's out. I'm going to hold down the red button now and move to the left. I'm holding it down. I'm moving to the left. It is not responding. Now he's walking in place. It is just... It's baffling me. When I first played this, I didn't think it was working correctly or something was wrong, like I was doing the controls wrong. And then all of a sudden I, was, I, I realized, wait, the controller is working. I can move left and right. I can pull out a sword, but nothing nothing was happening after that. So I thought it was a total bust, but I, I wanted to at least get past the dragon, who wah, wah We know what to do, but we just can't get the game to do it for us. It is ridiculously confusing. <laughs> Yes, we did it! Oh my gosh, we finished the dragon. Now we can move to the left. It took that long for it to finally respond. Okay, so we're still in the Black Forest. It goes to another screen. Now the way the game plays is you have something else that you have to get past. So the way we figured out is we talk to the sword. The sword gives us the answer. And then based on if we use the shield or the uh, fire or magic, that, that determines how to get past the screen. And you just move screen by screen with these puzzles. But man, oh man, you can see it's drawing in. The Black Forest. We are not waiting for that. The Black Forest is one of the worst responding games I've ever played. It is down here with Broken, and it's too bad because it has ideas. It's probably one of those games that has the idea of how to make a really cool experience, but it doesn't execute. It executes so poorly, it's one of the worst. So I'd like to see this kind of idea done, but just uh, play better where you can actually use the joystick. I'm going to go way down. Uh, this is a 0.5 game way down in the broken range. How you would continue to play or have the sense to play when you're m moving and pushing things and it just decides when it wants to control. All right, so after Black Forest, what is next? Let's go to the United Kingdom and play on our Atari home computer with Bomb Hunter. 
Let's take a look at Bomb Hunter, starting with the artwork. You only need 16K for this one. Channel 8 Software did this, a graphic adventure game requiring nerve and dexterity. Bomb Hunt International has been given their toughest assignment yet to locate and remove several time bombs from one building. The building in question is a maximum security government research establishment, and unfortunately the security system within the research center cannot be switched off. As Chief Controller for Bomb Hunt International, it's your job to control the search robot in order to remove all bombs before time runs out. Bomb Hunter runs on 16K of memory, takes extensive use of player missile graphics. You need the program recorder, basic cartridge, and one joystick. And there's the ad you would have seen in magazines from the time from Channel 8 Software. I don't. Th I think this is the first one. Yeah, we haven't seen Caves of Death or any of the other ones. So Sky Snakes is just find all the bombs before they explode. Watch out for guard robots and lasers. It says uh, 16 pounds for this one. And then if you open up the inside sleeve, it's supposed to remove all bombs before time runs out. You control all the action, move left, right or through one-way doors from room to room. The trigger will allow the robot to pick up one, pick up or drop objects found in rooms. There's 26 rooms in one cellar, which change layout from the game to game. Bombs are small orange squares on the floor. They're guarded by laser beams, which can be only crossed to safely if the plank or orange line is placed over the beam. It's only possible to carry one bomb at once. When the outside view is found, it's possible for the robot to drop the bomb after it's passed in in front of the first six windows. One room has a trap door which leads to the cellar. The door can be covered with a plank. One of the doors from the cellar will lead to the outside. One room contains a magic window. If the trigger is pressed as the robot passes the window, the robot will move to a room which is probably will contain the bomb. The number of bombs left is shown in the top left corner of the screen. Time is displayed and updated only when you enter a room. If the shield strength reaches zero, the robot will melt. So you have energy you got to watch out for as well. We got different game options. Uh, game option one is uh, it depends on how many bombs you have to find. So we're going to be playing the easy one for this part. And there's the example of the screenshot. Yeah, the art. There, there's a lot of things not going on. These last two games, this one is, is another one that just blows me away of how weird this is. <laughs> we're in the the realm of weird. All right, so let's let's pop in Bomb Hunter. Now, this is by Les Howarth, uh, Channel 8 Software. We're going to the United Kingdom in the beginning of July, 1982. This is the first part. I couldn't get this one to run even when I knew what the command was. Watch this. Channel 8 Software, wait a second. We got an error at, okay, so there's an error in the program, no problem. So I tried to look at the error, it didn't work. What you have to do is do a reset, do the whole thing all over again. And now it magically works. Dro drove me insane. So here we are, we're playing Ball Hunter. Which variation do we want? We want variation one. I am building a robot for you. What? We just started off the game and they automatically put our robot on the blue robot, by the way. <laughs> they put us right on an enemy and we died. And there we go. So we be began the game with the fastest death. It is a random game where the bombs are laid out or enemies. I've never booted it up, and th this is why I love the live show. I booted it up and it immediately died. All right, yes, we want to play again. <laughs> All right, let's go. Variation one. I am building a robot for you. That's what it looks like. Oh, wait, now, when we play again, look, all the graphics are gone. Wait, are we invincible? Yeah, the, the game now has decided to do whatever it wants to do. Oh my goodness. What a fun evening with the Atari home computer. Let's try again. <laughs> wow. Usually it's not that bad. I, I get games on cassette, cartridge, disc to load just fine. Ready? And it'll crash, no problem. We know what to do. We just reset and do the exact same thing again. <laughs> well, yeah, that's one reason why most people don't play every single computer game, because you have to deal with all this. Okay, we're going in. There you go. We got the graphics. We didn't start with an enemy. Here I am, moving left and right on the screen. It responds to your Tori joystick. Now, I am trying to uh, use my joystick to pass through different rooms. And the top left shows you we got two bombs left. All, all you do is move left and right. While it looks like you can move more than that, it's a solid side view. You're, you're just going uh, in two-dimensional space. And right now, I haven't found anything yet. Can't move ourselves to different rooms after that. We have a time limit for some reason. That's a terrible idea. It shows us our energy down there. And you can see the energy or shields are going down now. Can I take him out? No, it just, just brings my energy down. 
Oh, really? Okay, so th this might be the first time we had to experience that, at least. Okay, so we got a bomb. Pick it up. Got it. Okay, so we got our bomb. Now, oh, we have to pass through another shield. Okay, let's go this way with our bomb, then. Making our way over here. And, oh, we've fallen through a secret trap door. In the middle of nowhere, we found the secret trap door. Okay, great. So now we'll find our way out by going this way. Okay, we went to the next section. If you're lost, it's okay, and now that quickly, the shield is gone. Th this game is so ridiculously hard that it feels like whoever has developed it didn't actually go in and... We're playing on level one, but they, I don't think they even went in and tested to play the game. Because it, you, you die so quickly, it is, it is totally unfair. It's a cool idea to have different rooms with different bombs, but... Oh man, Ball Hunter, uh, I'm going to have to pass you again. It is not quite as broken as the last game we played, but it's still broken. Ball Hunter is, is, is a rough affair to load and to play. I'm going to still go one star of all the games you could play on any of the home computers back then. Are you still with me? The night is still young. We have more games to play. Let's press forward and see what's next. It's time to see what the latest issue of Byte Magazine is. All right, some normality. We don't have to load anything on the computer. Let's uh, let's flip through Byte Magazine of July 1982. This is the Small Systems Journal, which is hundreds of pages long. We are not going to be reading the entire journal. Let's take a look at the front of Byte Magazine. Computers in the Arts and Sciences. Uh, sciences. Look what they did there. Very nice. Music, art, yes. And we're going to be having computers do that. We need that for our video games. As usual, there's an ad by Chromemco. I'm going to breeze by that. And then just go to the table of contents. We're not going to be reading the whole thing. You can see this is 450 pages long. And this one is very, very technical. M more so than usual. Usually we get some kind of review or game, uh, but I, there's nothing really here as, as far as that goes. We have um, input uh, buffers, ground signal degradation. The conclusion of a six-part series that fundamental, fundamental issues in computer interfacing. Then we have computers, fiction, and poetry. Ge Computer-generated stories and poems shed light on the complex process known as creativity. Now, ho hold on. We're currently in the age of um, artificial intelligence, chat GPT, and all that. So it's funny to see in 1982 they're talking about computers generating stories. Uh, it must be totally different. <laughs> I don't know anybody that draws like that either, Victor. It looks weird. And then designing programs for humanists. We have microcomputers in the study of politics. Pascal program helps predict the outcome of arms races and two party conflicts. I th think we've already seen games like that. And then we have software tools for writers. They're going to talk about the word processing applications, which we don't get into. We're only here for the games. Then we have the his historian on the microcomputer, a student of the past meets the machine of the future. Simulating the neighborhood segregation, measuring attitudes with a Commodore pet, basic program that finds out how people feel. <laughs> and we've already seen a few games called Biorhythms that have come out for several of the home consoles, but uh, I think they're trying to dig into something deeper. It's not going to work out, fellas. Then we have microcomputers in cultural anthropology. Lots of stuff involving the arts, as you can see from the front cover. And then we also have a comparison of CPM86 and MS-DOS. All technical but it's going to inf influence what's going to happen with video games, especially on the home computer. And then over here we have the Model 1 and 3, the RS-232C port, the mysteries of the TRS-80 Model 1. Yes, we want to solve those mysteries. Then programming basic method in our critical path uh, method in basic, computers for humanity. And I tried to find something involving a article on video game or review on a video game, but we don't have any. Not even over here in the nucleus section. Uh, they have a few books that they review, a uh, technical forum, and then um, debugging a few different systems. TRS-80 graphics resolution, how to uh, re resolution, how to double it. Oh my gosh, really? Sega did? Well, hopefully it won't show up on the channel if it's not technically a game. We only want the games here. All right, so there's a, a quick taste, very technical one, of uh, July of 1982. Let's press forward and see our next game. It's an Atari kind of night. Let's let's check out Candy Factory for the Atari home computer. Starting with the box. This is another one by Gabelli Software. That looks like the green M&M on the front running away from smiley faces. And we got a candy bar and the five and a quarter floppy disk for Candy Factory with an example of the screenshot. Let's pop in Candy Factory by Eric Knopp, published by Gabelli Software, the beginning of July 1982. 
candy factory. I automatically think of it's going to be Pac-Man. It's going to be we're going to eat candies because we've been eating tons of food in maze games. Here we go. Press start to begin. We'll put start on the home computer. Oh, that makes sense. I can see it on the Dreamcast. What is this Dreamcast you speak of? All right, we're in. I am the bouncy blob. Oh, this is pretty cool. Okay, so this is obviously taking an homage from Mario and Don or Donkey Kong. I'm moving around as the ball on the screen, and I have a jump that I can move on the side, and we also have conveyor belts. But it works great. The jump mechanic feels really good. You can climb up ladders. We even saw in one magazine, they called this genre of video game a ladder climbing game. <laughs> Thanks to Donkey Kong. All right, so let's see, we make our way across. Yeah, it works. Very nice, yeah, smooth jump mechanic. It's awesome. Oh, but, oh no, they programmed fall damage in. Uh, if you look at the top of the screen, the, the amount of balls is how many li lives we have left. So whenever you do fall off the side, that's it. You're, you, you'll lose the life. Why did they start doing that? They, they, they make platformers show up in, and maybe because Donkey Kong did it first. Falling down and dying. It just, it, it just makes it so, I guess you, you have to think about how you jump to different places, but the, the whole point of this game is you need to get across. No, we didn't make it. We got the candy though. You gotta pick up all the candy, and then after you get it, you climb to the top and then leave the level. So we got one more piece at the top. Let's see if we can get by these guys. This is gonna be a little more tricky. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to jump over both. Yes! Still going, get the last piece of candy. It looks like an everlast everlasting gobstopper. And then we climb to the top. <laughs> you finally get to play as Evil Otto. He doesn't look as happy though as Evil Otto. Evil Otto has that sly grin. But as we make level by level, notice how nice it is to go to different screens. Oh, they have the conveyor belt. Very nice. I would still call this a Donkey Kong variant, even though there's no Donkey Kong throwing things at you. The side view, the ladders, the platforming, it all works great. Controlled very well on the Atari system. And after going from highly ambitious, but very broken video games to this one, this one feels like I should give it five stars, but I will not. We've seen other titles. This is definitely an above average game. Oh, they're starting to throw stuff now. They just dropped a girder on our heads. And you can see here, look, we have a, uh, the levels are now changing with platforms. Nice touch. And I don't think I could jump off this ledge because I'll die. There, there it is. They're, they're randomly dropping girders now to add a different level of challenge. Yeah, the floors aren't destructible. I think it's just dr dropping random pieces down where my location is. But still, Gabelli Software uh, they programmed a really good game. This one is excellent. <laughs> oh, Mr. Robot. One we're going to be seeing later, I'm guessing. Yeah, there's another one. Just random girder. It's going on the place that I was last. But we're still on... We're not repeating levels. I want to see how far this will go before we see the, the, the first level again. These kinds of games, we've only seen, I believe, only four or five screens before they loop. Uh, there's all the candy. Let's move on. Is every time we go on, it makes another level for us? Look at this, yeah. So slightly different, great platforming. We're still in the, the very infancy. Look, and they even changed up. We have some compressors at the top. So they're adding elements to the game. Oh, yeah, and you can't just walk off the edge. You will die. Even though you're controlling a bouncing blob, which is going to be the last. There's a lot of games that you control a, a, a bouncing blob. But this one is programmed very well. It's, it feels really good to move and jump. So you can see I need to make my way. I won't be able to make this gap on the right side, so i got to go all the way down here. And you have to go across where the... Oh, they got me. <laughs> With the girder. So you have to go where the compressors are at the top right. Not doing anything special with the pokey chip or sound here on the Atari home computer. But as far as gameplay goes, this is this is excellent. I would recommend this one because I want to see what the next level is. And there you go. We got the game over. I want to see how far this goes. That's awesome. 
<laughs> I say everlasting gobstopper. All right, so that's Candy Factory. That's pretty good. Uh, I know I'm going from bizarre, broken games to this one, but this is still an excellent, excellent game. I'm going to go four stars for Candy Factory. If you were in 1982, if you've seen everything we've seen up to this point, what would you give Candy Factory? Oh, yeah, Ariel's with four. Very nice. It's a lot of fun. Anytime I see something that's close to Donkey Kong, just bear in mind, there is no such thing as Donkey Kong Jr. There's no such thing as Mario Brothers. As far as platformers go, there's only a handful out there. So it's still fresh, and it, this one was programmed very well. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. Oh, even four and a half. Very nice. All right. Still on the Atari home computer, this is Caterpiggle. Let's take a look at Caterpiggle, starting with the box. Another one by APX. This is by Scott Ludwig. Way to go, Scott. Devour the serpents crawling through the maze. Here's the APX advertisement you would have seen at, this, at the time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's up there. It's very good. I'd even give the I, I'd give it four point two five, but we're only doing a half star, so I'll I'll keep it at four for right now. <laughs> welcome, welcome. There's the cassette tape you pop in to play Caterpiggle on your Atari home computer with an example of the screenshot. Let's see the manual on APX. As usual, it doesn't look very impressive. They're all pretty much the same. This is available on cassette and disc. What is Caterpiggle? Tell us how to play, Scott Ludwig. How do you play? We're going to breeze by all the intro. Wow, the longest overview we've seen on an APX game. You're about to bark on an exciting chase through an intricate maze. You're the Caterpiggle. You're trying to devour the long, marauding snakes that move every way. You have to be crafted out with the snakes. Use your controller, your joystick controller to maneuver Caterpiggle in pursuit of them. Sometimes they grow longer by segments, even while you're Caterpiggle. Caterpiggle is eating them. If you have your... Oh my gosh, I'm going to say it too many times. It's going to totally lose its luster. Sometimes segments break off and drift away even after they've eaten them. They give Caterp Caterpiggle trouble because they slow him down while he's digesting them. If the pesky snakes aren't enough, you have to be on your guard against the Vigilant Serp Serpent Security Force. These three creatures roam the maze and... Okay, it is like Pac-Man. They're going to be the ghosts. The Serpent Security Force. Caterpiggle collides with one of them. He's doomed for the time being. He has a chance to take vengeance on serpent security if you maneuver him skillfully enough. If he's eating a snake while a patrolman is touching it, the patrolman vanishes with the snake. Your Caterpiggle has three lives at the start. Each time they polish off the snakes on the screen, he goes to a new level. The snakes grow longer, move faster, and serpent security becomes more ruthless and efficient. On each level, you have a chance to earn more points, too. And finally, a new life for your Caterpiggle. <laughs> oh, man. On higher levels, immense players meet a tougher challenge. Here's a chance to strategize and build up high scores. Plug that joystick in and play. And if you want to contact him, write him here. Whoa, in Hawaii. Let's go to where he is and play some. Yes, APX. What a great program. Great idea. And uh, we're going to see even more games. Uh, th this is one reason why the Atari hung on during the video game crash or, or console crash in North America. Great idea. All right, so we have different alternate versions. Let's pop in Caterpiggle by Scott Ludwig, published by APX in the beginning of July 1982. Caterpiggle. Hopefully I don't have to say that again. I'll just say I'm playing and not that Caterpiggle is doing anything. Hey! The musical beast by Carl... Mosh Meyer, way to go, Carl! Look at that. There's only one other computer out there that can do chords like this: the Commodore Max Machine, or at least as well. Oh, there we go. Let's go and select for level. Looks like we got level two, three. I believe it's just changing up difficulty. So this is me pushing the select button on the Atari home computer, and then let's go ahead and push start and play Caterpiggle. Nice. It's music there. I'm playing as, uh, I guess, the Caterpiggle. And uh, I am the blue character that's eating up the snakes on the end. What is this S here? Let's see. Is that one of the enemies? Oh, it is. <laughs> they even have sad music. Can I eat the head of the Caterpillar? Let's see. Oh, I can't. Okay. So it's really not like uh, Konami's, uh, Konami's arcade game where you had to eat the tail. You just have to get in there where the snake is. And take out the pieces. Easy peasy. So it's generating it from these areas. You can see it slowly coming out. The other one on the right side is coming out. And you're just eating all the segments. Once you get all the segments, then you move on to the next level. 
Check out the animation down at the bottom of your lives. That's pretty slick. All right, and we have the police force coming after us. I believe if I'm, yeah, if I'm eating the piece. Yeah, and it counted the go to level three. So now we're on level three, moving on. It's kind of, it's really not like Konami's game. This is this is a little different. It's just because we're chasing a stink because that involves shots. This one has no shots. There's nothing I'm doing with a red button on my BCS joystick. But it does feel like an arcade game at home. It feels very good with the music that plays. Sound effects are crisp. Yeah. Yep, it's still a fresh take, though, on the Maze variant, or Pac-Man craze. Let's see if we can get in there. I'll go to the other snake on the other side. It's still going. Oh, it's still growing. And so if we are doing this while they come, yeah, it works. And they go back to their cages, kind of like the ghosts in Pac-Man. So you're using the snake as your power-ups. Interesting idea. I don't think... Yeah, they're speeding up, getting a little bit more difficult. You can see I can wait for them to come out. Oh, they're still going. Oh, but if you're not, I wasn't in the middle of eating the snake, so it didn't count. So I can go over to this one. We got one piece left of the other one. Oh, he didn't take the bait. Okay, so we got one piece left over this side. And we even have the warp. If you see, I can go down, warp to the top, just like in Pac-Man. Very nice. <laughs> Let's go. There we go. Nice. It might be too easy. Usually, if I'm going really well or playing really well, then the game's a little too too easy. Oh, see, now how did that one not count? Unless they were all grouped together for it. So, first impression, that's pretty good. Caterpiggle Piggle is an interesting idea. So of all the games you could play on a home computer, what would you give Cat or Piggle? Is it pretty average for all those other computer games? Is it above average? Is it great? Is it one of the best computer games you could play? I wouldn't say high, as high as the best computer game, but uh, Cat or Piggle is a very good one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I thought Nibbler 2 from Konami, but it didn't have the shooting mechanic and it didn't require you to hit the, hit the tail. It, it may have been inspired by the idea of putting a snake in the maze with everyone else. Yeah, I'm with um, the rest of the chat. I'm going to go three and a half stars for Cat or Piggle of all the other games you could play on a home computer. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. It's time to go to the UK again and play on the ZX Spectrum. This is Caterpillar Crunch. That's right, Caterpillar Crunch. Another one that we don't have the box for, just a few screenshots. Different versions to play. Let's pop in Caterpillar Crunch by Electra Personal Computer Software in the beginning of July 1982. Travel around the garden eating insects, but do not go into the garden walls or your trial or your or your trail. Once you have eaten all the insects, you may go out of the gate into the next garden. So there's our controls. Remember, we're playing this on the ZX Spectrum keyboard only. Let's see, am I in? I am in, okay. It is a snake variant, right? Yeah. Move around, get the points. Oh, interesting. It's a different take on that. So it's not a snake variant. A snake variant means that you're eating things to make yourself grow longer. This one is just constantly going longer and longer. So it's a light cycle variant, like Tron. Think light cycle. But it's giving you an objective. You have to pick up all the pieces on the board and then make to the exit over here on the right side. So it's a level by level based snake light cycle, whatever you want to call it. Well done. Pattern room completed. You get a bonus. Very nice. So they're turning it almost into a puzzly game where you go level by level. You have pattern two. And now they added different enemies and then walls, speeding it up a little bit. Nice touch. But it's essentially still a, a, a snake style game. It really would be more light cycle if we had another enemy here. But you pick them all up and then make to the exit. Don't hit the wall. Barely made it that time. <laughs> I love that, Amanda. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> Pattern two is done, and we move on to the next round. 
this is great. It's taking the idea, while it is only one player, but it is giving you the, 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 the draw to play by going level to level. What is the next level going to be like? I like it. So you have to make sure. Oops, see, I think I've already blown it. Yep, I think I've already blown it because I can't get to the exit. See, wasn't playing the game. The game was playing me. Now I can't leave. I have to just die. So we'll just go on the side and die. That's pretty nice. Caterpillar Crunch. That's a good one. Um, th that's all right for the time. While it is a little slow pace and there's only one player, um, it's still around average for all the games we'd see up to this point. I'm going to say about three stars for Caterpillar Crunch. That's a pretty solid game for the ZX Spectrum. That's nice. Yeah, very nice. All right, after we leave the breakfast cereal, Caterpillar Crunch. <laughs> Part of a balanced breakfast. Let's press forward and see our next game. We are still in the United Kingdom, and this is Chopper for the Commodore VIC-20. Let's take a look at Chopper, starting with the box. We have attack and destroy the enemy base, but watch out for guided missiles. This is by Sumlock. It says again on the front of the box, full high-res color graphics and superb sound. On the Commodore VIC-20, really? You're going you're gonna to say you got high-res graphics? It is for the unexpanded VIC, and we also have the cassette tape we're going to pop in by T. Flanders. Mr. Flanders, let's pop in and play Chopper. By Sumlock Electronic Services, the beginning of July 1982. All right, we can use the joystick for this one if you want to. There's our point values. Make sure you memorize those. I got our Commodore VIC-20 joystick plugged in, and we're in. I'm playing as the Chopper, and we're already dead. <laughs> they shot me down that fast. All right, so, yeah, um, it is... Controls are what we typically see for a tile-based programming game like this. But, um, wait, what in the world is that? Wait, they have a heat-seeking missile that... I don't think I can lose that one. It just shot me down really fast. But um, I have my button to fire, and they shot me down really fast again. The lives are going down quickly here. Let's see, there it is. Okay, so you can drop bombs. Just like Canyon Bomber or several other games. Gosh, yeah, the heat-seeking missiles are very unfair. All right, that's it. Time to blow them up. We have a constant barrage down at the bottom, which is that sh uh, ship that's firing. But my goal is to rack up the points, destroying... Oh, no, the heat-seeking missile! I don't know how to shake this thing. I'm just going to go up and down and see if it drops. It's, it, all it's doing is continuing to follow me. Go away! No, go away! It's still not it's it's still not going away. Wow. Okay, I got rid of it. It's that thing. That thing. Stop it. No, it, it dropped another heat-seeking missile. I don't know. Okay, I got past that. That's just crazy OP. All right, so Chopper is program like uh, other ones we've seen so it's not super smooth but it is nice that it has the joystick to control i cannot destroy the ship that's firing the constant volleys at the top all i can do is rack up points with the tanks or other the other enemies that are driving by at least we're told they're enemies we don't know if they're friendly or not it does right oh and if you smash into the walls you're dead replay we say yes or we just push the button. Yeah, we'll say no for right now. All right, so that is Chopper for the Commodore VIC-20. Eh, of all the games you could play at the time, it's really not uh, the most impressive uh, game you could play on a home computer. It gets the job done. Maybe you'd have a few minutes of fun in the United Kingdom, but I'd say uh, this is a two and a half star game. It is slower paced. It has nothing to draw you to the next level. The controls are a little bit sloppy. Oh, we got even lower scores. Errol's going one and a half stars. I wouldn't call this bad, though, uh, of all the games you can play on a home computer. That's why I'll go two and a half stars for Chopper. It is good enough, or a fun enough time, especially on the Commodore VIC-20. With that, let's press forward and see the next game. It's time to play the Apple II, and this is Congo. Let's take a look at Congo, starting with the artwork. All we got is the advertisement flyer you would have seen at the time. The Congo challenges you. This is by Sentient Software. The rush of the Congo River, the rapid survival, it's all about pushing you toward the unknown dangers. Your obstacle is Mother Nature herself. 
hungry hippos, huge river snakes, crocodiles, panthers, and the jagged rocks of the Congo. It's a race against time. You, your raft, and your skill as a navigator are most important in rescuing the people on shore and from the scattering islands along your route. Accept the challenge. The fate of those helpless people is in your hands. Cynthia Software makes Congo for the Apple computer. Yes, they do. With an exam, not really the real disc. Not the real scan. All right, let's pop it and play Congo. The beginning of July, 1982. Yeah, the VIC-20, it depends on how you feel with the controller. <laughs> this is by Michael Berlin with Harry Wilker. Way to go, Michael and Harry. We want to play joystick. Yes, we do. All right, we're hitting J and we're playing some Congo. This one uses the Apple II joystick and it works to go left, right, up and down. Very cool idea. So it's not using like a total 2D perspective. We get to go into the distance sailing down the river of the Congo. We are not getting any points for sailing down the river though. And I'm guessing we have to avoid all these things. I see people on <laughs> rafts. Are we supposed to avoid them? Oh wait, here's someone we can rescue. Let's see if we can get close enough. Oh, I got too close. I rescued him and then smashed him to the side. Oh, there's someone up top. Let's see if we can get them. Don't leave. Oh, I missed him. Oh, I hit that one too. So the entire control scheme is just move around, dodge everything, and then try to rescue who you can. You got crocodiles to avoid at the top. Constantly scrolling to the left. Oh, no, yep. Uh, not the super simplest to control, but it gets the job done. It's well enough for the Apple II. Let's go again. Yes, we did cover Omega Race. Yes, we did. Omega Race is fantastic. It was near the release of Gorf as well on the Commodore VIC-20. So I guess you kind of get lucky on rescuing. There's sometimes the people that will show up at the top. Oh, here's somebody. Let's see if we can get him. Got him. And we didn't crash that time. 100 points. It took forever. Okay, let's go to the top. Don't crash. Got him. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it now. It is a nuanced feeling, though, of getting close but not colliding to stop the gameplay. And I bet they're going to throw more and more things at me as the river goes on. I don't know for sure if I'm supposed to rescue that dog or whatever animal that is running back and forth at the top, but I miss another player or one of my buddies the name of the game now is just survive can I get you no can't pick him up so what why did they animate wait what just happened I lost no I didn't run oh was that too close to the crocodile why did they kill me oh okay maybe it is a leopard we're all about using our imagination right now here's one we can pick up Barely got him. Now, the, the detection on when you can rescue him isn't quite clear. I don't also don't know if the, the people swimming in the boat I'm supposed to rescue. The only way to find out is smash into him and see if you die. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying I'm reevaluating the, the the game and the gameplay. This would be a typical three-star, perfectly average game of 1982. This this is uh, exactly what you'd expect to see, especially on the, the Apple II. There's nothing that's pushing this particularly in further or behind, but it's, it's a good enough game, but it's not doing anything incredible or amazing. What in the world? Wait, no, we're dying because of a different reason. There's something else that's going on that's why we're going down. But uh, yeah, great detail for the Apple II. Very nice. So that's Congo. I'm going to go with, uh, of all the games you could play on a home computer, Congo is pretty cool. I'm going to say three stars. Perfectly average for the time. And uh, I'll, I'll consent with the chat. We'll go back to Chopper. Because of all the ratings I saw for Chopper, that's why you need to be here for the live show. I'm going to go two stars. We'll say it's bad. It's the best of the bad, but it's still bad for Chopper. So after Congo, let's press forward and see our next game. That's what it is. Thank you, the timer. You got to fight the timer as well. That's what it was. Thank you so much. We are back on the Commodore VIC-20 in the United States. This is Cosmic Snake. 
Cosmic Snake is one we don't have the artwork for, just a few screenshots. Let's pop in and play Cosmic Snake by Frank Lindsay of MIS, published by Luna Software. The beginning of January, 1982. Cosmic Snake. Okay, we're ready. Get ready. I'm ready. Oh yeah, there it is. Cosmic Snake. I've seen this one before. This is... We actually saw lots of Centipede variants on the Commodore VIC-20. This is lumped in with all the pretty average Centipede variants, not doing anything very very different or well than the others. But you can see it's... Yeah, it's Centipede. In a sci-fi theme, too. There's no bugs. Usually they... They dest destroy you with bugs or insects or something. Where's the flea and the spider? I don't think they programmed it in. Yeah, and just goes to the next one. There you go. So Centipede's still really fresh. Oh, we got a UFO at the top. Nice touch. Very good. Whoa. Oh my goodness. There it was. Just saw the, the spider just fly right by. It was a sad face. It was Evil Otto's twin brother. Nice Otto. Yeah, there we, there we go. Look at that. And the UFO at the top. Well, even though Centipede's still fresh, this game idea and the way this plays isn't as well as the other ones we've seen. Uh, this is this is pretty much average. I'd say three stars of all the games you could play at the time. Unless you're a big Centipede fan, you, you'd get more enjoyment out of this. Plus, we played other ones with paddle controls that feel a little bit better than this one. Gosh, I don't know how I dodged that. I don't know how I dodged that. <laughs> okay, I didn't dodge that one. <laughs> oh, Centipede? Yes, it's excellent. All right, Maudlin Auto, love it. Yeah, works better. Do we want to play again? No, I think we got the general idea. So Cosmic Snake, um, it's still fr a fresh idea. Uh, Centipede is still up, still up there with a good idea. But I'm still going to say because of all the other variants we've played on the home computer, this one's still just average. It's uh, a good time. You'd have a, a good play on your Commodore VIC-20, but uh, nothing that's going to push it above average. All right, so after Cosmic Snake, where are we going now? We are still on the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Cricket. Let's take a look at Cricket. When I first saw the title, I thought, oh, it's our very first Cricket, the sports game Cricket. No, this is actual insect Cricket. We're still on the insect craze here. All right, so this one we don't have a lot of information for. I got the um, catalog for... Uh, I got the catalog clipping for this one, and you can see Cricket is by Joel Levesque. Good job, Joel. The, cricket, the, the company brought you Asteroids, Munchman, and a host of other blockbusters. We present you with Cricket. It's a challenging game with a cast of characters you'll love and hate. All you have to do is get Chirp. Oh, they named him. That's cute. For one side of the road to the river and then cross the river. Not, not so fast, though. First, you have to figure out how to dodge the traffic and get to the center. Then how are you going to get across the river? Look, here comes a log, even a turtle. Hitch a ride across the river and jump from one to the other. Keep a sharp eye out for Abe, Aid, the gator. He loves to have crickets for lunch. So they're making it sound like... This was made, they made this up. So that, that, that begs the question, how many people out there played these games first, all the variants first, before the arcade title? I, I just feel, well, here on the channel, we're playing everything. So you see this game Cricket, and you're like, oh, it's just Frogger. We're, we're playing Frogger. But how many people got this game and thought this was Frog, this was Cricket? Uh, and when they saw the arcade game, they're like, oh, okay, this is, this is a Cricket variant. <laughs> so this is... Uh, Cricket. Now, this was another one that is baffles me as far as loading the game and playing the game. The Commodore VIC-20 so far is the only home computer will, where I will boot up a cassette or boot up a, uh, a disc, only cassette or disc, and sometimes they will load, but then sometimes they will crash. And I cannot determine what makes them load or crash. It is the most is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. Of all the home computers out there, usually I get consistent results of what happens. Not here. So let's let, let's pop in and see what happens when we try to play cricket on the Commodore VIC-20. <laughs> this is published by Computer Matt, the beginning of July 1982. Oh man, yeah, get ready. Push play on the tape. Let's go. Uh-oh, nope, nope, not good. Nope, not good. See, and uh, the last time I loaded it, it worked just fine. But not to worry, we have a save state. <laughs> there you go, that's the way it's supposed to look. This program may not be reproduced in any form under penalty of law. That's probably what it is. They found us. Let's hit a key. 
In this game, you must move Chirp the Cricket across a, bu a busy highway and over the river. On the highway, avoid the cars and trucks. On the river, you must jump across the logs. Uh, leaves the tur uh, the logs, leaves, and turtles. You may hop uh, on Aid the Gator as long as you don't land on his mouth. Wait, Aid? Like Gator Aid? I get it now. In the middle row, you must hop across the rocks throughout touch without touching the fr gulp the frog. Getting chirp across is worth 100 points plus a bonus. And then you also get chirp across four times. You'll get an extra cricket and 500 points added to the, the bonus. The quicker you get across, the more bonus you'll get. We've also seen the amazing adventures of Mr. F. Flea. And we were a flea moving from one to the end. And then, of course, we played other hosts of Frogger variants besides this one. Yes, maybe we got to blow on the tape. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, that's a very good point, Punk Rock. I've tried this with different ones. This is supposed to be unexpanded Vic. There's no other memory required in this one. But I've tried with 8K. I've tried with 3 i I've tried with different variations. And we finally got this to come up, as what you see here. So you can use the joystick to move Chirp all the way across, or you have the keyboard controls. When the game is done, hit a key to start the new game, and then jump across the river. Jump carefully, or you may slip and fall in. And wait while the game loads. Again. Remember, we already loaded, and then no, it is crashing again. This one I could not get to run uh, correctly or smoothly every single time. So it is another title that because of doing this on the live show, it just doesn't work out. So even if we wanted to, let's list, where's the air? As a syntax, yeah. Darn. Well, there you go. That is uh, not playing cricket. But over here on the left side, it shows you the gameplay. It is very, very large um, characters that are like background tiles they're using uh, to move the, the everything on the screen which is a nice aesthetic but you can see how slow paced it is until we can get someone to either uh, give me a better tape to load or the correct way to load cricket we're going to have to say this one is a busted one a one star for cricket and i'm going to base that by what we see in the in the footage over on the left side <laughs> that's right it's not just cricket but we're going to have to call it broken for now sadly i want to play and see every single frogger variant if we can and it just, uh, my limit is if I spend 24 hours or an entire day on a game and I'm not able to get it to go, I'm just going to have to say it's broken for now. It's lost to time. And cricket is another one. <laughs> All right. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. Big plans? We're back on the Atari home computer, 400 or 800. And this is the Crips of Plumbus. Let's take a look at the Crips of Plumbus, starting with the box. That is pretty impressive for the front of a computer box. Computer program cassette on your 400, 800, and it's high resolution. Is every game in the early 80s high resolution? <laughs> this is by Cosme. Contains one program cassette, instruction manual, and then you gotta have 16K memory for this. Looks like we're transporting or teleporting with a tractor beam something. And then we also have a different box, and if you flip it over on the back, of arcade quality, fast action, defend the earth from raiding aliens whose mothership is extracting the crypts of Plumbus and leaving behind their contents. 150 years accumulation of deadly atomic waste. Inside we got the cassette, the instruction manual, and then you need joysticks to play. We got our joysticks in. We're ready to rock. We have our cassette that we pop in. And we also have an example of the screenshot. Let's take a look at the manual for the crypts of Plumbus. A challenging five-level defender game. Hey! They actually say Defender. How about that? I don't think we've seen any variant actually say what game they're doing. A Defender game. That blows my mind. Every other variant for everything we've seen up to this point has never said what game. Like the Cricket game. They didn't say it's a, it's a Frogger game. This actually has the guts. James A. Jingo did this one. James, you got the guts. All right, let's flip through the manual and see what Crips of Plimbus is. It's only one player affair. The year is 2112. The Earth has stopped using radioactive elements to create energy through nuclear fusion. All energy used on Earth is now created by hydrogen fusion harmlessly created from seawater. The same principle that powers our sun and the stars. However, 150 years of atomic waste produced during the preceding years lies beneath the surface of the Earth in vaults of lead. Plumbus. Plumbus? Oh, I see. These crypts of Plumbus protect the Earth's inhabitants from the deadly radiation contained inside. Nonetheless, a new menace appears. Another galaxy has developed an alternate energy source based upon high-speed electrolysis, similar to our storage batteries on Earth, requiring massive amounts of red lead. They are searching the universe for deposits of pure lead to power their spaceships and are attempting to extract the crypts of Plumbus from the Earth with their powerful tractor beams. So we gotta get them! Destroy them all! How do you load them up? We're going to breeze by that. Look at all those instructions of how to load. Man, 
getting to play your games back in the early 80s was a, a very serious affair. It was it was sweat, blood, and tears. And there's the disc version if you're playing that one. Use the joystick controllers. We can fire air-to-air -air laser missiles pressing the red fire button on our Atari VCS. Move left and right. You cannot fly off the screen since the picture begins scrolling. We can go up, down, or diagonal movement. And to play them, the program is loaded. You pick the level of difficulty you want, pressing the select button, and then press start to play. The game is now live, and you see your ship and surrounding landscape. The enemy fighters will appear randomly, and you must maneuver and destroy them. At various intervals, you'll see a brighter and larger mothership appear. If you're successful in eliminating her, there'll be a slight pause in the action while you receive a musical salute. Action will automatically commence again following the salute, so be alert. However, if you allow the mothership to descend to a low enough altitude, her tractor, powerful tractor beams will suck up one of the crypts of Plumbus, thereby leaving behind enormous amounts of deadly atomic waste. During this extraction process, the giant mothership's force field suspends all other action. Each time the extraction occurs, you'll notice that the landscape becomes brighter and brighter as the radiation builds up. If you allow the mothership to extract all seven of the crypts, bluey, critical mass is achieved and the earth is destroyed. That sounds fun. Let's make that happen. If you begin at very easy level, you know that the enemy ships do not shoot at you. They merely attempt to crash into you. So it gets more progressively more difficult if you decide to pick that. And then at the bottom, you'll see alien shot, fuel, ships left. These categories continue to keep track of your kills. Very nice touch. As in real air battle, not all your laser missiles will score direct hits and destroy the enemy. So be on your guard. And you can also lure them into valleys and have them crash just like you. That's nice. <laughs> this version is known as playing possum. And there's our scores. For the Crips of Plumbus. 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 Plumbus? <laughs> Your score is a result of the number of aliens you have shot. You receive one point for each enemy fighter and three points for each mothership. The score is kept track above the alien shot category so they're even doing that that's a nice touch too following the above circumstances you will automatically display your score and rank so after you finish with the game they give you a rating after that and then when you eliminate all everything and you've been uh, your score will be displayed you can restart the game at the same level you previously played by pressing the start key on your computer or change the level of difficulty and this shows you what the other keys do for your system let's pop in and play the crypts of plumbus by James Jingo of Cosmic Corporation, beginning of July 1982. Hey, welcome, welcome. We are in the United States playing the Crypts of Plumbus. We are going to play on very easy, that's for sure. Pushing start on our home computer, and we are in. Just like they said, it's Defender. But where's my radar? If it's, if it's a real Defender, it's got to have a radar, right? Very bizarre scrolling. Uh, the, the map is scrolling, but look at the enemies. The enemies just, just hang out. They don't move at all. It's, it's the poor man's defender. You don't get a radar, and you get enemies that are barely moving by. Oh, is that the mothership? We must destroy the mothership. Yes. That was the, that was the fanfare. <laughs> Another mothership coming. Alright, so I'm going to pretend it's 1982, I'm in a computer store and I'm buying the game. From what I read, and because if I was able to read the manual, I would be hyped to play Defender. We have played uh, th the game called Defender on the BBC Micro home computer, and we've also played its ripoff, uh, Polaris, but this... Oh, we've also played the, the, the ripoff of Defender, but it played way better than this and had more in, involved to make it feel like Defender. Even this, if this was going to try a different... Look at that, it's so cheap. <laughs> look at look at the enemies, look! <laughs> look at this! Uh-oh, it's doing it. Oh wow, it's like it's doing a cutscene! We have to destroy the mothership. <laughs> look at that. And then it just goes right back in, so if the mothership gets too close, that's... Well, with the premise, I was actually going to rate this as an above-average game. I'm thinking more of rating it just as average for the time. Which is so bizarre, because usually the Defender variants we get are pretty cool. That is it. That is a nice touch with the cutscene. Yes, you can crash into the terrain. And in fact, you can lure the enemies to crash into the terrain, too. Well, now we got to see total destruction, total critical mass. I want to see the Earth blow up. Well, we might lose too many ships to see the Earth blow up. Look at how unfair the enemies... Look at the... <laughs> you, 
You can barely fly away from the enemies. No, okay, come get my... My plumbus. Yes, take it all. Oh, wow, it's gonna take a long time. Look how many much more they gotta grab. And we have to wait for... Where's the mothership going? It just... It left the cutscene. <laughs> it started the cutscene, and then the mothership is just... Oh, there it is. It went wrapped around the other side. Plus one for the cutscene. I, I still say... Th it, you could maybe say this is a bad game. Uh, because of the unfairness, and it's a little sloppy with the way it was programmed. It has some cool elements there, but <laughs> look how fast the death is. Our rank was Ace Pilot. Hey, we didn't do so bad if we're Ace Pilot. <laughs> oh man, that's 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 rough. It's almost like a game that it was a tug of war. It was pulling me back and forth between. It's bad. Wait, no, it's not that bad. And uh, I'll, I'll still say of all the games you could play on a home computer, a three star affair. Anybody else with me? Throw those chats out now. The Crips of Plumbus. What an interesting and bizarre night. It's time for us to put our video game playing on pause. Tune in next episode where we have a curiously titled Atari VCS game and a Taito arcade game you probably forgot about. That's it for today, and like I always say, the human imagination is limitless especially when you have 48K or 64K to use. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.